Hello together, this is Daniel speaking and I will welcome you to the 10th exercise called Function Approximators in Control. After you've learned something about Function Approximator Prediction last time together with Max, we will today um, deal with Function Approximator Control, which is still a topic of research and not yet used economically due to missing experts in reinforcement learning and we try to overcome this now. Due to control tasks being more complex than prediction tasks we need uh, very performant algorithms and often domain specific expert knowledge to succeed with function approximator control. In this task we will again use the mountain car from OpenEye Gym like the last time in exercise 9. Um, for execution of the following code please make sure that you have installed sklearn if you haven't maybe use the um, command shown here. In the first task we will use artificial neural networks for semi-gradient SASA control. This is quite similar to the prediction task of the last exercise. If you haven't used TensorFlow yet we will refer to that last exercise. So we will now write a control algorithm using that artificial neural network to control the mountain car shown here. As we already know, it directly terminates even after 200 time steps or if the goal above here is reached. Every time step we get a negative reward of minus one, so we should reach the goal as fast as possible. Mm, the state space is here the position and the velocity again and um, we present a feature vector which maps this into the area of plus minus one you already know from the last exercise. The input space is again zero for force into left direction, one for idle and two for force into the right direction. And as we already mentioned control problems uh, with the use of function approximators are quite harder than prediction tasks. So yeah, let's say with some easy um, feature vector how it works or if we waste our time or not. I first give you here a featureize function out of the last exercise we will use in the beginning and we will also give you here a plot surface function where the Q values can be calculated using the model we will train now in this cell here. Here you find the solution for a semi-gradient SASA control algorithm using the RNN topology defined here um, with two layers in the middle and an output layer of size 3. If we compare this to the lecture slides that means that we use a topology shown here in the middle. So as input we uh, take the featureized state um, for the neural network and we got in this case here three outputs so the Q values um, for that state um, for the action left idle or right. You can even try one of the other topologies so have one single network for estimating um, one the Q value of one action or have the action here as an in input but we will present now the results of the medal here. I would invite you to uh, go on your own through the, the detailed code here. So let's have a look at the results after that 300 episodes. Mm, just shown.
down here. I've used here the plot function to show the values on the state space. So here the velocity and the position of the car and on the Z axis is the value for a greedy execution in negative. The plot is executed after every hundred episodes. So let's have a look at the last plot here. So the cost to go mm, is estimated somehow not good as we see here in um, dark red we can see the visited states and we see that the car um, has went around only in the middle of the state space so we can see that um, using that simple features We've got a very dominant extrapolation because we estimate the values um, here on the corners we have never seen based on some um, measurements here in the middle. Using a lot of that often wrong estimates we're not able in the end to reach the goal which we can also show using this cell here for greedy execution. So as we have seen, simple features um, will not always do the trick like in the first task. Mm, this is due to the generalization aspect of artificial neural networks, which is usually an advantage, but in our case here, like we've seen, we're not able to explore the state space sufficiently. To overcome this due to wrong extrapolation, um, we use now different features. In this case here, we use radial basis functions. So RBS has have a um, Gaussian response as a feature X here. Um, we give depending on the state x mm, the center uh, marked with c of the rbf and the standard deviation here this leads to limited impact of the measurements of the middle positions of the state space on the um, state space in the corners. For more information we for example refer to the book of Bottle and Sutton. We have already defined that RBF feature functions for you using the mentioned toolbox here. We use RBF samplers so we've taken um, four of them with different standard deviations here marked by a gamma and from each we've taken a hundred components uh, which are uh, randomly separated about the state space. So using now this feature vector instead of the simple one presented and um, the same artificial neural network like above mm, we see the following results so we have again here a look um, at the greedy execute uh, the the value for the greedy execution for the state space here for um, the initialized artificial neural network and now for the running 100 episodes every 10 episodes and we can see here like the uh, how the cost to go increases step by step and this looks much better than in task 1 so we can see here in the middle range of the uh, state space we estimate for the greedy execution um, that we mm, get more than 
minus 100 reward till we reach the goal. Additionally, I've prepared a learning curve for the problem above where I've executed 20 independent runs, as you can see in this plot here. And what you see is um, on the y axis the steps needed per episode in blue in average and in red the standard deviation about these um, 20 runs and on the z-axis um, the episodes after zero episodes 60 100 episodes and you can see here that after hmm, maybe 30 episodes um, the rnn agent um, is able in average to solve the problem um, but not all the time as we can see in the standard deviation but after 100 episodes it's um, possible to solve it in average in about 150 steps plus minus this standard deviation area here next i've prepared an, another um, plot here where you can see the execution after the learning so the execution of all the 20 agents after 100 episodes um, as a box plot on the left here we see the greedy execution which um, yeah, took an average like above about 150 steps per episode and on the right side you see the epsilon greedy execution with an epsilon I've chosen to 15% and you can see that in average it took more steps um, to reach the goal due to the um, <clears throat> random execution and at least we take again um, the in this case last trained agent after 100 episodes to execute and show if um, the agent is able to solve that problem here due to feature engineering it was quite successful um, for using artificial neural networks we now try here to use it with the linear function approximator. So we will use online least square policy iteration where we will on the following write a SASA control algorithm. And we've done some changes to the featureize function. So please go through it and try to understand it. Um, as you see here, we've got now additional uh, policy function. In this policy function, we will t um, choose the action here, epsilon greedy. Therefore, we um, need the action as additional input to our featureize function that we can get the Q values depending on the action um, for the given state. And this we do here for every action we get to calculate the best action value epsilon greedy in this case. So please go through these two functions and try to understand it on your own. So in the following we've got an, provided an additional plot uh, function and also uh, something for performance measurement and here we've got the algorithm which is quite similar to one we've used already in the last exercises. I again invite you to go through this on your own so let's have a look at the results. I have um, used the plot function here after every 10th episode running 400 episodes here and we can see again um, the value for an, uh, greedy execution in the state over the state space here after 10 episodes um, 
in this case 20 and we see okay here um, the algorithm starts to estimate in the middle of the state space um, that it needs more steps from there and if we have a look at the last plot here this is the last plot after 100 episodes this looks quite similar to the result of the artificial neural network um, but here the z-axis is much smaller this is due to the forgetting factor lambda um, because we've chosen lambda equals one which means all um, measurements are equal and due to our changing policy over time this is um, not at all the best choice but choosing lambda um, smaller than one could lead to numerical issues. I invite you to try it yourself. And so if we would uh, choose lambda smaller than one, we were able to estimate here the real z values better, or even if we um, go for, uh, for episodes run till infinity. So again, um, I have taken here the measurement of 20 runs over this 100 episodes. And you can see again on the y-axis as performance measurement here, the steps needed per episode after 0, 20 till 100 episodes in blue, um, the mean and in red the standard deviation. We can see that um, the linear model here is somehow an average directly able to um, solve the problem in that 200 steps, um, which decreases and um, after 30 episodes, it um, yeah already needs or is able to solve the problem in about 150 steps per episode. So if we compare this uh, to the performance measurement from the uh, RNN agent we can see here, you can surprisingly see that uh, the linear model is faster able to solve the problem here and even after hundred episodes it needs an average less steps per episode this is due to the artificial neural network is a quite strong tool and um, I think in this case here we would just need more time for the training so train for more episodes and in this case um, the artificial neural network would uh, be able to solve it with the same or better performance. The same results we can see if we compare the box plots of the best performing agent here for the linear LSPI, um, which tells us the same result that for greedy execution it's an average better than for epsilon greedy execution and in comparison to the artificial neural network um, after that only 100 episodes it performs even better. So in the end we use again the cell to show the performance of the last trained agent um, to solve the problem. So in the end we can conclude that using that RBF features um, even the linear agent here is able to solve uh, the mountain car environment after the 100 episodes in comparison to the strong tool uh, of an artificial neural network even faster. Um, but if we have a look in uh, to the code again, we have chosen here the forgetting factor lambda equals um, 1. But since the, our policy is changing over time, um, it would be better to choose a lambda smaller than one. Because 
with lambda equals one, all observations are weighted equally, um, which not describes the behavior of our changing policy here. But nevertheless, even with our, our used features and the lambda equals one, um, the algorithm here is uh, able to do acceptable on policy control. And if you um, use more episodes, so let them go till infinity, even with lambda equals one, we are able to estimate somehow the real values in the end. So this is the end of this exercise. Thank you for listening and goodbye.